the year 2012 has been full of extreme weather events. Thousands of temperature records have been broken across the United States. July was the single hottest month recorded since measurements began in the 1890s. By September of this year, more than 7 million acres of wildlife habitat were consumed by wildfires. More than three quarters of our nation's breadbasket, from Kansas through Missouri in Illinois and Indiana, has gone without rain for much of the summer, damaging or destroying corn, soybean, and alfalfa fields. In response, the United States Department of Agriculture made the largest disaster declaration in U.S. history. To find similar conditions, one has to go back to the 1930s Dust Bowl days. And now, world-renowned climate scientists like James Hansen have confirmed what many of us have suspected for years. These increasingly common extreme weather events are linked to climate change. In this short video, we describe a few specific examples of how this extreme weather, fueled by climate change, has impacted North American farmers and the crops and fruits they produce. Spring came about a month early in Maryland thanks to unusually warm weather. The first day of the growing season was historically May 1st, but by 2010 it was April 14th, and in 2011 it was April 8th. And while the start of the Maryland growing season is arriving earlier and earlier each year, the threat of frosts is not moving with it. Temperatures still dip into the mid-30s for at least a few days in April. One Maryland grape grower lost 30% of his vineyard because a frost hit on May 8th. In Wisconsin, grapes budded early, that is in March, a month ahead of schedule, but were then damaged and destroyed by April frosts. In the Great Lakes region, high temperatures in March broke records everywhere. Climate researchers say there's never been anything like it in more than 100 years. This historic March warm-up left northwest Michigan fruit trees vulnerable should the more typical cooler spring temperatures return, as they always have. And colder temperatures did return. A hard April freeze largely wiped out this year's cherry crop. Cherry Bay orchards lost 90% of their tart crop and 80% of the sweet variety following a prolonged spring freeze during which temperatures dropped into the mid-twenties. At the National Cherry Festival in Traverse City, Michigan, festival goers have always enjoyed locally grown cherries. However, this year vendors had to sell cherries purchased from the state of Washington and the country of Poland to meet demand. Much of the upper Midwest suffered through one of the driest growing seasons in nearly 50 years. In late August, Cochrane, Wisconsin corn stalks should have been lush, green, and 10 feet tall. Instead, they were brown, crisp, and barely 6 feet high. Ohio's record high temperatures and low rainfall are expected to cause corn yields to fall by nearly 30%. In some areas of the state, farmers are seeing yields up to 60% below last year. In Texas, the state's entire long grain rice production has been threatened by the lack of water. Our changing climate is having a direct impact on North American fruit and crops. But there are secondary or indirect problems as well. A longer growing season caused by the early arrival of warm spring temperatures means fruit eating and spoiling insect pests can reproduce much more often. These early spring warm-ups also require growers to start spraying orchards with fungicides earlier and more often. And many of the early spring fruit tree buds and blooms are not getting pollinated once the unseasonally warm weather returns to normal turns out it's too cold for honeybees to fly and thus pollinate the orchards of North America. 
there is now abundant evidence of the ecological impacts of recent climate change. Examples have been documented from polar terrestrial to tropical marine environments, and yet we are only experiencing the initial effects of climate change. Analysis of more than 1,700 species show systematic biological trends which match climate change predictions. Most climate change models are now predicting a 3 to 8 degree Fahrenheit increase in average temps by the year 2100, not the 2 degree rise we were talking about just a decade ago. Of course, the consequences of climate change go well beyond the damage to North American crop and fruit production, as we have just described. We must act now to reduce carbon pollution if we are to have any chance of protecting our wildlife, waterways and water supplies, food production, and the people who depend upon the natural resources of our nation. What can you do? Support Environmental Protection Agency and Congressional Action to Limit Industrial Carbon Pollution. Support clean energy initiatives like wind, solar, geothermal, and biomass to power a new America. And hold fossil fuel industries accountable for the full costs of their pollution. By taking action now, we can reduce the impact of climate change accelerate growth of job-creating green technologies, and repower America with clean and renewable energy.